Algebra 1 12.6a equations of inverse variation. Now this is 12.6a. If you haven't seen 12.5a or 12.5b, you might get confused and you might want to watch those first. And there's links in this video's description so you can just click on them and come back to this one. All right. If you do understand direct variation, you'll be fine. You'll be okay. So the equation y equals kx represents a direct variation. And the equation y equals k divided by x represents an inverse variation. As a car travels faster, it gets to its destination in less time. So if we needed to go 10 miles to get to the mall, and we travel at 10 miles an hour, it's going to take us an entire hour to get there because we're going only 10 miles an hour. As we increase the speed of the car, we're going to get there in less time. If we go 40 miles an hour, it's only going to take us one-fourth of an hour. So as our speed goes up, the time it takes to get there goes down. That's an inverse variation. The time varies inversely as the rate. Remember, inverse means opposite. So as one value goes up, as the other value goes down, or one value goes down as the other value goes up. They inversely affect each other, okay? We can find an equation of inverse variation when we're given an ordered pair, like an x value and a y value. And for equations of the form y equals k divided by x, that inverse variation, the variables are inversely proportional. So depending on what this value of k is, is going to uh, affect the x and y in proportion to each other. If x is tripled, then y is divided by 3. If x is cut in half, then y is doubled. It goes up, see? The opposite is happening. So our definition is an equation of the form y equals k divided by x, where k is that constant of variation, shows inverse variation, okay? To find an equation of variation where y varies inversely as x, if we're given y equals 145 when x equals 8 tenths, we have our xy values, our ordered pair, and we can plug it into this equation, so we get 145 equals k over 8 tenths, k divided by 8 tenths. All we have to do is multiply this value over here, this y value, by the denominator of k, and 145 times 8 tenths comes out to 116, so k equals 116. The equation of variation is y equals 116 divided by x. And since this is a function relationship, we can write it as the function of x equals 116 divided by x as the equation of inverse variation. See? So it's very similar to what we were doing in the previous two videos with the direct variation, except now, instead of multiplying k times x, we're dividing k by x. See that? So as that car went faster, the time it takes to arrive goes down. The faster the speed, the more this goes up, the time is going down. And each product of these pairs is going to equal 10 because 10 is 1. See? The inverse relationship makes this one go up and this one cut in half. See? 10 times 1 is 10. 20 times a half is 20 halves, which equals 10. 30 times a third is 30 thirds. See, 30 over 3, that equals 10. And the 40 times 1 fourth is going to equal 40 over 4, or 10. See how that happened? The product of the x and y variables in an inverse variation is the constant k. So we know the constant is 10. All right, that's the k value. Now, there's some common situations when one quantity varies inversely as another. It could be like the time needed to mow, mow a really large lawn can vary inversely by how many people are mowing. So if you've got a really large lawn to mow, it could take you a couple hours. But if you've got a few friends helping you, well, you're going to get it done quicker, aren't you? So how about the pitch of a piano string? If you've ever looked inside of a piano, there's different length strings inside the piano. Some are long, some are short, and the pitch of the piano string varies inversely as its length. 
How about if you're going to tile a floor? How many tiles are needed to tile a room varies inversely on how large the tiles are. If you've got little tiny tiles, well, then you're going to need thousands of them. But if you've got big, huge tiles, then you're not going to need as many. See? How about the amount of steps a dog needs to walk varies inversely on the length of its legs. On a little dachshund, it's got little short legs, and to walk the same distance as this big dog, it's going to have to take lots of little tiny steps. So there's going to be more steps with less height. See? If there's more height to the legs, he's going to take less steps. See? That varies inversely. Or a little two-year-old walking compared to an adult walking, the little two-year-old is going to take a lot more steps because the legs are shorter. See? Our next video is going to be 12.6b. I'm going to do word problems with inverse variation. And of course, like always in this playlist, if you want to go back and watch any of the previous videos that we talked about, like if you do want to go back and watch 12.5a and 12.5b about direct variation, you can just click on the link in this description and go there. We talk about functions, we talk about how to recognize them, and linear functions, and quadratic functions, and all the other function fun videos we've made for Chapter 12. All right? We've got one more unit, and we'll be heading on to Chapter 13. All right? I hope this was helpful. I hope you're doing okay. Keep your chin up. We're going to make it. We're almost done. Bye.